The problem we have here is a horizontal clothesline is tied between two poles 10 meters apart. We have a mass of four kilograms that's tied to the middle, and it makes the, the line sag by a distance of one meter. And we want to know what is the magnitude of the tension that's on the ends of the clotheslines. So what we're searching for is each of these clotheslines, they're holding up the block with each a tension T. And we're trying to find out what that tension is. So because tension is a force, we want to look at how the forces are balanced in this problem. So the force that has to be balanced is the weight of this block. And so the weight's going to be pulling downward and it has a magnitude of m times g for g, the gravitational acceleration. Now, in each of these tensions, they're going off at angles. So what we have to consider is that each one has the vertical component of the tension. We call that the y component of the tension. So clearing that out, we can say the y tension has to support mg. But it's not just mg, because there's two of them. So they're each going to split the load. So the y component is going to be mg over 2 for each of them. And if we compute this, uh, mg is 4 times 9.8. Then we get about 39.2. And then we divide that by 2 to get about 19.6, in this case, exactly 19.6 newtons. So that's the y component for each of these tensions. Well, we've got the y component, but what does that tell us about the total tension? Well, one thing we can consider is that this is making a triangle with this angle theta. And so with this angle theta, we have to think about some trigonometry here. So what we can do with the trigonometry is we know this y component that's pointing upward, and we want this total hypotenuse. So we have to think about the trig function that relates the hypotenuse to the adjacent side of the angle. And adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine. So we can say that the cosine of theta will equal the adjacent, which is the y component, over the hypotenuse, the total tension. And we want that total tension, so let's rearrange this, multiplying it over and then dividing by cosine. We get the y component divided by the cosine of theta. OK, so we know the y component, but we don't know what this angle theta is. Now, there's a couple ways to do that, but maybe the most straightforward is using some simple geometry. Because we know that this side has a length of one meter, the distance that it sags down. But what about this side of the triangle on the left? Well, that's going to be half of the 10 meters. So up here, this is going to be a length of 5 meters. So we have the opposite to the angle and the adjacent of the angle. Well, opposite and adjacent makes tangent. So the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite 5 over the adjacent 1. So undoing that, we can say that theta will equal the inverse tangent of 5. And if we run that through our calculators, we get 78.7. And that's with a little bit of rounding, but that's good enough. So 78.7, and we're ready to plug that in for our cosine. So we plug that in, ty is 19.6, and we divide that by the cosine of 78.7, and I get 100.0. Or we can just keep this as 100 newtons.